Good day, my schoolers. You're welcome to my school channel, and my name is Abiola. Remember, in this channel, we are solving the Jam CBT past question for the subject chemistry, the year 2013. Do not go anywhere, stay with us, and we'll be right back. Welcome back to my school channel and in this video segment we are solving questions 24 to 44. So join me as we start with question 24. A metal that forms soluble trousers surface for a ion is what? Okay, so when you talk about ammonium, you talk about potassium, you talk about sodium and calcium. They form soluble trousers of it for, alright? Talking about solubility, we're talking about water, okay, at least for this context. So every other metallic sort of this, they are insoluble. So once again, I'm going to take the soluble ones, soluble, the metals that form the soluble trousers of it for, um, trousers of it for, yes. So they are ammonium, right? Potassium, sodium, and calcium. So, which of the listed um, metals do we find in the options provided? We find potassium. So, the correct option would be option B for potassium. Question 25. Copper is displaced from the solution of its salt by most metals because it's what? So, this is due to its position, all right, in the activity series or the electrochemical series. So, um, it's even been it. Um, just beneath hydrogen, okay? So, definitely most metals will displace it, okay? So, the correct option here will be option B, okay? Copper is displaced from the solution of its salt by most metals because it is at the bottom of the activity series, okay? So, after copper, we have mercury, then silver, and gold for metals. So, once again, option B is the correct option. Question 26. The colored nature of transition metal ions are associated with their partially what filled words. Okay, so we should just note this, it's very easy. They are partially filled d orbital, okay, account for this um, special kind of characteristics or properties that we see them display. So the correct option here is option D for D orbital. 27. Aluminium containers are frequently used to transport trials and nitrate fiber acid because aluminium does not react with this particular acid, okay? What aluminium reacts with, okay, is dilute HCl. So if um, the, the aluminium container is being used, okay, to transport trials and nitrate fiber acid, the reason why it is safe or it is um, credited to be so is because aluminium does not react with this particular acid. So where do we find that correct option? That would be option C. So option C is the option we are looking for. 28. 2 methyl propan 2 oil is an example of what? Okay, definitely we know this is an alkanol, but we want to determine if it is a primary, a secondary, or tertiary alkanol. Okay, so um, looking at this, when you talk about primary alkanol, all right, they just have um, an alkyl group attached to that carbon atom, okay, that is carrying the hydroxyl group. So, primary means one alkyl group, secondary two, tertiary three, okay. So, using this um, concept and other concept that you may have as well, we can see when we draw out the structure of two methylpropan two or we can see clearly that it's definitely a tertiary alkanol. So option B is the correct option. 29. The reaction between ammonia and ethyl ethanoate produces what? It produces ethanol and ethanamide. Okay, so when you examine the chemical properties of ethyl ethanoate, okay, so you are going to see hydrolysis, you are going to see reaction with ammonia, and when this reaction takes place, okay, what you should get or what will be produced, they have ethanol and ethanamide. So option D is the correct option. Question 30. The decarboxylation of ethanoic acid will produce carbon four oxide and what? So this reaction requires um, this being treated with soda lime. 
So when you introduce soda lime, what will be produced are carbon four oxide and an arcane with lower molecular mass, and that is methane. So the correct option here will be CO2 and CH4. That is carbon four oxide and methane. So the correct option here is option A for methane. Do not forget to click on the link in the description below. It's going to take you to the MySchool website where you can get the MySchool mobile app or the MySchool software. All for a token of 1000 error to activate these devices. So join me as we solve question 31. The primary amide is generally represented by the formula word. So generally when you talk about amide, you are looking at the functional group, okay, carboxy amide. Okay, so the primary amide, that means just a carbon atom, all right. So if you look at all of this presentation together, at first you should be able to tell the structure, all right, of the amide. So this is, it's just one carbon atom, um, identify the primary amide, then secondary, then from there you can tell the succession. So if primary is one, one carbon atom, then secondary will be what? So that goes to, um, to us who are learning. So the correct option here will be option B, R, C, O, N, H, 2, C. Okay, the O will be bonded at the end. Then we have the NH2, then we have the R. So the correct option once again is option B. Do not forget to hit that like button. Also, click on the subscribe button and always tap on bell notifications so you can get alerts immediately we upload the next video clip just for you. 32. Which of the following fraction is used as raw material for the cracking process? That is the diesel oil. So, you know, um, certain textbook or text material has, it has um, oil, gas oils and diesel oil. So when you talk about all of this, this combo put together, you can be talking about your usefulness when it comes to diesel engine and um, raw material for the cracking process. So going back to the context of options provided, we'll find that diesel oils, they had the raw material for the cracking process. So option D is the correct option. Question 33. An organic compound contains 60% carbon, 13.3% hydrogen and 26.7% oxygen. Okay, so calculate the empirical formula. All right, so we know that carbon is 12, hydrogen is 1, and oxygen is 16. So we just have to do this, getting the empirical formula. We pull out three columns. All right, the percentage of carbon is 60. This is 13.3. Then, of course, oxygen is 26.7%. Okay, so um, we know that carbon is 12, so we divide. We know hydrogen is 1, then oxygen is 16. All right, so when we divide this, we should have 5. Right, so when we divide this, it's 13.3. Then when we make this um, division, what we should have is roughly... 1.67 yeah thereabouts so what we are going to do we are going to divide through by the smallest value which is this this gives us one when i divide this what i should have roughly should be eight okay so i have eight one when i divide this what i should have roughly should amount to three so we can see that it will be c3 H8, then O for oxygen, then 1. I mean, I don't need to put this. So let's see if we can find this C3H8O1 or O in the options provided. So join me as we look through the options together and we'll find that in option B. So option B is the correct option. Number 34. From the diagram above, an ideal gas is represented by what? So when you consider this graph, we're looking at some. Um, the boy's law all right just for this presentation so we are plotting pv against p all right so and there's a very obvious contrast between iodine gas and a real gas okay so when you understand this concept you will see that um the id gas is being represented by this straight line this horizontal straight line z so the correct option here will be option a for z Question 35. In the graph above, the activation energy of the catalyzed reaction is what? Okay, so um, we should know that um, the presence of catalyst actually affects the rate of reaction by doing what? Take, for instance, a positive catalyst. What it does is it lowers the activation energy so that more uh, reactants 
can become products or more products can be formed, simply put. So when we look at um, the positive catalyst here, uh, we can now see that from the graph, the activation and energy of the catalyzed reaction is found where? It's found there, it lowers it. So it's found at the level 200 um, kilojoules. So we have the option D as the option we are looking for. 36. Choose the correct option from the graph above. We have three moles of iron solid plus four moles of water. Okay, gaseous form. This is a reversible reaction. Okay, so the forward and the backward reaction. Then we have this and this. So the equilibrium constant K of the reaction above is represented as what? So just take note when we refer to equilibrium constant K, is really is is equal to the product over reactant. Okay, so um, when you, when you look at the products. Constituent, it would have been just um, this is one mole of this, so it would have been this raised to power one. Okay, then beside this, this would be raised to power four. Okay, then over the uh, reactant side, which is this ion raised to power three, all right, alongside this water raised to power four. Okay, so um, but we are going to take our highs of the solid, okay, that is represented here, and we we'll just focus. On the, on the gaseous parts of the reaction. So remember, it's still product over reactant. So the product side, we have four moles of hydrogen gas. So that will be H2 raised to power 4, all right, over the reactant, the gaseous reactant now, which is four moles of water. That's H2O raised to power 4. So you just have to relate this using the concept for the correct formula of equilibrium constant K. So option C is the most viable option. 37. The IUPAC nomenclature for the compound above is what? Okay, you just have to follow uh, the naming protocols okay, for hydrocarbons. So when you look at this, this is a double bond. This tells you it's an akin family, A-L-K-E-N-E, -E, double bond. So where is it positioned? It's positioned on the first carbon chain. So definitely we are looking at um, one in. So how many carbons can we have? at least from the longest chain, we have one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so that tells we are looking at paint five, okay? So that is paint one in. So what position do we have the alkyl group attached? Okay, so let's count. We're going to start from the carbon that is closest to the double bond, all right? So uh, we're going to do one, two, three, four. So the alkyl group is attached to the fourth carbon atom, okay, based on this uh, long carbon chain. So we are going to have this presentation as 4-methyl pent 1-in. So that is option A. So option A is the option we are looking for. 38. Use the above option to answer this question. Okay, the dehydration of ammonium salt of alkanoic acid produces a compound with general formula what? Okay, uh, for, to be specific, okay, what you are going to get is ethanamide, all right, and water. So, and we are talking about amines. This is a description for the preparation of amides. So, anamides or ethanamide, to be specific, belongs to the amide family, and this is their general formula. So, option B is the correct option. Do not forget that you can ask those questions right now. All you need to do, click on that link. It's going to take you to the My School website. There you can ask your questions and solutions will be provided for you. So join me as we solve question 39. Use the following option above to answer this question. Okay, Which of the following compounds in solution with some red litmus paper blue? So we are talking about um, a property that is characteristic of bases okay so and we know that our minds are bases okay our minds are liquids and gases with fishy smell all right they are polar compounds as well so when you want to tap out the general formula for our minds okay this is it rnh2 so the correct option here is option c Perhaps you have better steps or explanations to any of the questions we have solved so far. Please, we'd like to know what you need to do. Use that comment section below indicate the question number and the explanations or contributions you'd like to share. Question 40. The compound above is an what? Okay, so at first you have to determine the functional group and this is it. 
okay so this tells you this is an alkanon or ketones okay so they differ from um, alkanons okay by the presence of hydrogen in the alkanon so this is an alkanon or a ketone so specifically what alkanon is it okay let's just go further from the question we have one two three that is propanol okay so what number that is proper to on all right so specifically going by the options provided we'll see that the correct option is option a for alkanon or ketone so option a is the correct option question 41 how many unpaired electrons are in the p orbitals of a fluorine atom so uh, we can decide to make this more interactive by pulling out um, the atomic number of fluorine okay so fluorine is atomic number what remember we have hydrogen helium lithium beryllium boron carbon nitrogen oxygen fluorine neon so fluorine is with atomic number nine okay so when i want to pull out the configuration i can have this okay two to five okay so for the p orbitals i can do this all right so at first you fill up isn't it all right then we can see it's already five two four five so we are asked from the question that how many unpaired electrons are in the p orbitals of a fluorine at atom we can see it's just one unpaired electron so where do we find the value one let's check the screen together so we can see that its position in option c so option c is the correct option 42 the radioactive emission with the least ionization power is what okay that is gamma rays okay when you compare it to alpha particles and um, beta rays or beta particles okay uh, at first we should note that um, gamma ray is not a particle like alpha and beta that we are looking at okay so and again it has no charge it has no mass of course it has the least ionization power but the most penetrating Okay, so the correct option here is option C for uh, gamma electromagnetic wave or gamma rays, simply put. So option C is the correct option. For the three, um, we have zinc plus CuSO4 gives you zinc SO4, ZnSO4 plus Cu. Okay, so in the reaction above, the oxidizing agent is what? Okay, so at first you have to know what oxidizing agents are. At first, they donate oxygen. Okay, they accept electrons, okay, and they become reduced. So, from the reactant side, which of these um, reactants or reagents actually donated oxygen? And that is copper 2 tetra ozosulfate 6. Okay, so this is your oxidizing agent. So, where do we find it um, located in the options provided? You find that in option A. So, option A is the correct option that contains copper 2 tetra ozosulfate 6 as the oxidizing agent question 44 in the reaction above the concentration of two moles of um, so3 can be increased by doing what okay so at first this is on the product side and we can see the heat content is negative so this tells you it's an exothermic reaction so for an exothermic reaction if you must favor the product side or the forward reaction you have to decrease or lower temperature all right so if you increase temperature you are favoring the backward reaction or reactant formation so right here we want to um, favor or increase the production of this so what do we do we decrease the temperature so do we have any concepts like that in the options provided of course we find that in option b so by decreasing the temperature the concentration of two moles of this can be increased so option b is the option we are looking for right there we've come to the end of this video clip but there are definitely more interactive and interesting clips to come all you need to do to be on top of your game is to hit that like button also click on the subscribe button and always tap on bell notifications so you can get alerts immediately we upload the next video segment just for you